Let's go. Hey, biology people, let me give you a little quick video. Uh, these guys, they can't be in the video because this is for children, and that would break the law. I don't want to do that. Anyway, so don't even dare get over here. If you do, I'm just going to have to erase this. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to give you a few quick things here so you can get a better grasp of what's going on in 15.3 and 15.4. I think uh, you look at pictures of sponges and you really don't get an idea of, of what they're doing. So uh, I'm sending you a link to a real short video on uh, on sponges that I, that I found pretty interesting and another one on um, on jellyfish. Okay, thought they were pretty good. And you get to watch Smart Every Day episode where he shows how the nematocysts on the jellyfish work, how they can zap things. Or it's a CNME or something. Maybe it's jellyfish, whatever. But there's some links uh, for you just to watch, okay? That's all. It's just educational. And then uh, in your packet, you've got uh, this handout here. Let me turn this sideways. Uh, it's got other slides in here that uh, you're going to use probably when you do the lab, but you probably need to look at them, uh, get an idea of what's going on with both what we got here with um, sponges and Jellyfish, Hydra being one of them in that family, Phylum Nidaria. Give you some lame pictures. The videos would be way better than my uh, my super lame pictures. So anyway, I want to start with this one here because we got this pie chart. And uh, what I'm really interested in is the sponges and Nidarians. This is the family of jellyfish and sea anemones and uh, hydras and a whole bunch of you know soft-bodied animals. 5,000 different kinds of sponges, over 10,000 different types of jellyfish, hydra, etc. That's a lot, but compared to all the different kinds of animals out there, not very much. Um, <clears throat> okay, so if you've got, and you should, in the email I sent you a sheet with invertebrates, I've got some of it filled in here. So uh, here we go. Had to take a picture of it because I didn't scan it. So in the kingdom animalia, the other day I showed you that you've got invertebrates and then you've got the chordates, which break down into one of those classifications was the vertebrates. And so in 15.3, we've got the sponges. And I showed you some sponges yesterday, so I'm not going to do that. And the video does a really good job of showing you some very large sponges. I have one other sample of sponges. I don't know if you can see that there, but there's a bunch of little, uh, little sponges uh, that all fit in this jar. These are large. Grantia sponges. So sponges can be very small. They can be really big. You'll see a big funnel one there in uh, the video. Their main uh, characteristics is that they have pores on the side that suck water in. It goes past these special cells called collar cells, which pick up all the nutrients. They're filter feeders. So they're like big filters for the ocean. All the junk, all the fish poop, all the little bits of plankton that are floating around in the ocean, they suck all that up, eat it, and then spit out fairly clean water. They also pull uh, oxygen out of the water so they can breathe and spit out carbon dioxide. Um, yeah, so you see more of that in the video. The periphera are the sponges. They have pores. They have in-current pores. They have ex-current pores. They suck water in the side. They shoot it out the top. There's three different kinds of sponges. Uh, so they're classified based on um, import, ex export pores and also on the type of spicules they have. Their spicules are their skeletons. Those things come in different shapes like, like um, I don't know, like uh, snowflakes and triangles and stuff like that. So you'll be looking in the lab, you'll be looking at the spicules. So that's how they're classified. And their collar cells are what help them eat and circulate the water through their, through their uh, bodies. Then quickly on to the next one to be jellyfish and things like it. The Nidarians was uh, used to be called uh, Colenterata, which means that it's got like an open middle part of its body. And it's it's same kind of thing. It can suck water in there and can squeeze it out. Um, so we got the Hydra, which was a monster in, in uh, classical mythology. It's this multi-headed monster. If you cut one head off, like two grow back. And that is very much like what uh, Hydra can do. You can you can bud these things. You can cut off different arms, and they'll grow back the arms. You've got jellyfish, which have two parts of their life cycle. They live both as polyps. Um, that would be like this. They grow in stacks. You'll see that in the videos. They reproduce, and, they'll, and then they'll break off, and they'll float around, and they form uh, what's called a medusa. Medusa, also another classical crazy thing. 
Uh, Medusa had a bunch of uh, hair that was snakes. So she's pretty creepy and scary. Jellyfish can be kind of creepy and scary. I got some jellyfish in a jar here that you'll look at when you do the lab. I got some bigger ones and got some smaller ones, uh, but they're uh, pretty creepy. We've seen some of those on the beach too. And then coral, which we talked about yesterday, showed you some examples of those. They can be soft or hard. The soft ones just don't do as much uh, pulling out of the water of carbon dioxide to make calcium carbonate, like this hard shell. And it depends on what part of the ocean that they're growing in. If they grow, um, well, if they live in warmer water closer to the equator, you have a lot more hard coral. If you uh, if they live further away in the like temperate zone or Arctic zones, they're going to have more soft bodies on them. But Great Barrier Reef would be an example off the coast of of uh, Australia. They're of uh, lots and lots of different types of corals. Watch the video about it. There are about 600 different types of hard and soft corals in the world. There are about 100 different species of jellyfish living in the Great Barrier Reef. 3,000 varieties of mollusks, 500 species of worms. 1,625 types of fish, 133 varieties of sharks or rays, and about 30 or so whales or dolphins. Uh, the, they are the aquatic equivalent. The Great Barrier Reef is the aquatic equivalent of rainforests. So um, vast variety of, of living things there uh, in the big Great Barrier Reef. Other, a couple other things that are in that family, or sorry, in that phylum, sea anemones which you'll see at just about every um, every aquarium. And uh, I got some bad pictures of those in the handouts. And the Portuguese man of war, which is this kind of like colonial jellyfish structure type of thing. Okay, so I'm going to send you some videos, this video and, and three others that I just want you to watch. Smarter every day on how um, the little things zip out of the cells and, and sting things. And uh, there you go. There's our first bit, section 15.3, and then I think phylum night area is section 15.4. That's all for this. Um, happy viewing.